say good. There you go. Good deal. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, uh, financial aid resources, training schools, technical programs, skilled trade professions, career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and today we are with uh, Colleen from Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union, and we are continuing our financial literacy series. And today we are going to be talking about owning versus renting. Welcome back, Colleen. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Glad to be back. Um, been a few, been a, seems like it's been a minute. So yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, today, owning versus renting, uh, it's something that you will most likely have to decide at some point. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not in six months. You're saying, well, I, I'm not going to have to worry about that. I live at home, or well, I'm living at college. At some point, you know, you're going to think about whether you want to continue renting or start renting or own. So this is just uh, a great overview of the different categories uh, that you should keep in mind. And of course, we have a wonderful video. First Time Homebuyer Jen is about to take a tour of three potential properties. But first, I want to... Excuse me. Down here. But first, I want to get a better sense of exactly what my client is looking for. Tell me about your absolute must-haves. Hardwood floors. And to feel like a real adult making progress in this world. And an open concept living space. What did you say? It's when the kitchen like flows into the living room. No, no, no. Before that, you're buying a house just to feel like a grown-up? Well, it's obviously better than renting. Right? Anyone considering a move needs to understand the pros and cons of renting and home ownership before they make a decision either way. I'm guessing I won't be touring houses today because Doris found out I didn't do any research before coming on the show. That's exactly right. Owning a home responsibly has long-term benefits. You don't have to worry about your landlord not renewing your lease. A mortgage can be easier to budget for too. You don't have much control over increases in monthly rent, but renting does have short-term advantages like mobility. Moving out is simpler. Plus, you can live and work in neighborhoods that would be out of your price range if you were limited to buying. It's a good point. Owning a home means I couldn't just leave for a new job or something. It would complicate things. Maybe your family is growing, or maybe you just want that stability. Either way, if you're buying a house, you want to make sure you're sticking around for at least the next five years. But what about the freedom? With my own place, I could finally paint the walls and have as many cats as I want to. Eek! Oh, right. Sorry. As a legal owner, you're not restricted by a rental agreement. The trade-off is that you have to deal with the never-ending cycle of upkeep and repair that comes with maintaining a property. It's a huge responsibility that adds stress and expense. When you rent, your landlord takes responsibility for any major issues. At least in theory. But why keep paying my landlord when I could be putting money toward my own home instead? People assume buying a house is a good investment, but the reality is that you can generate value by renting too. You can profit from an increase in property value if and when you resell your house. This doesn't apply to renting. Don't forget that properties can lose value too. Homeowners can choose to rent out their property as a source of income. Again, not applicable to renters, but your living expenses as a renter are simple compared to what ownership costs, which means you can invest the money you'd otherwise sink into your home and grow your wealth that way. Owning and renting are just different. It's not like one is good and one is bad. Buying a house doesn't make you a grown-up. Making the right decision for you is a much more grown-up thing to do. 
Whether you're renting or buying, you can still find your perfect home sweet home. Or should I say, hey. home squeak home. <laughs> hey, I'll give you some time to think about it. Stop it. Who knows? Maybe we'll end hey. up... The perfect Stop place it. for you. It's <laughs> bad kitty. All right, wonderful. Can you see the uh, owning, owning it? Let me see, go backwards and do it again. Yeah, owning versus renting a home, right? Yes. Right. Um, I do want to point out and start with owning versus renting a home. A home is where you live. A home is, you know, as they say, a home is where the heart is. So, you can be talking about renting an apartment or renting a house. You can be talking about, you know, purchasing, you know, a condo or an apartment or purchasing a home. Automatically, we tend to think buying a house, renting an apartment. And that's common, but that's not the only options, you know, so just keeping that in mind as we go. There's key differences between owning and renting a home. And like I said, you may not be deciding today, uh, but uh, what was that statistic? The average American uh, moves 11 times in their life, which is a lot of times. <laughs> it may be easy sometimes, incredibly difficult others. Uh, I moved from apartment to apartment multiple times um, when I was younger. We'll kind of go over why comparing the options how do you know which one's right for you like they said in the video there's not a good or bad choice it's personal stability owning a home it gives you literally that feeling of stability i i own this piece of land you know i have this property uh you know it may be small it may be two bedroom one bedroom three bedroom home but you know, no matter what, I can always give my family somewhere to stay. You know, no matter what, uh, I know I'll always have somewhere to come home to. Or, you know, it, it, it's that uh, you'll never end up on the streets type feeling. Uh, renting, you feel as stable as your lease, is, your lease expires. Uh, usually a year, most of the time, uh, people rent houses or apartments for a year at a time. Uh, I've also done six month leases at a time uh, when you're not sure if you're going to be here, you know, or when you're going to move, because uh, when you make a lease, uh, you're committed to it. So you don't have that feeling of, I know I'm going to be staying in this location. Uh, mobility, the ability to move to change. How difficult is that? You know, certainly it matters, um, you know, if you have a family, but right now we're just thinking on your own. We're thinking by yourself. Um, if you own a home, you know, you, you can't just turn it over. You have to, you know, put it up for sale. You have to, you know, have people look at it, negotiate, sell. There's a lot of paperwork. It takes time. Uh, even though houses are selling extremely fast these days, um, it still takes a couple months. I mean, and the physical amount of stuff you pack up and move uh, is usually more. Uh, renting, it's pretty easy. Uh, unfortunately, people run out on their leases, sneak out on their leases in the middle of the night because they don't have a lot of stuff. They can fit everything they have in the back of their car uh, or they can afford a tiny small space because they don't have you know, a whole lot of stuff. Um, my, my fiance in New York, he was renting a room in someone's apartment. I may or may not have mentioned it before. Uh, so he just had a room and it was so small. And that, that's all he really had. He didn't have like a living room to hang out and it was just his room. And that would, that would make me crazy. That's just too small. But he thought that was all right. Uh, location. 
owning, if you're purchasing a home or purchasing a condo, you're paying, you know, market value, what it is worth at that time. Uh, if you are in a, a more affluent area, Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills, uh, even Troy, Rochester, the home prices are going to be more expensive to purchase, meaning your taxes are going to be more expensive. Uh, and when you think about school districts, usually where you have those blue ribbon, you know, wonderful school districts, uh, the home prices are even a little higher. So your budget, you may not be able to live in the location that, uh, or I should say the exact location. You know, I'd love to live, you know, right on the lake. Uh, I'd love to live, you know, with a great big yard. You know, I'd love to live in, in, and have a, a balcony. Well, where those locations are maybe out of your price range. If you're owning, you may only be able to afford, um, you know, medium or uh, a lower, uh, lower priced area. And that doesn't mean you have to stay there your whole life. Renting, you have more flexibility because the same thing, you are paying the market rate for what that apartment or what that house is worth monthly in a rent, but you don't have those other expenses. You don't have taxes uh, or homeowner's insurance and, and, and maintenance and there's costs you don't spend. So you could afford to live, you know, in downtown, you know, downtown Chicago or downtown New York is extremely expensive. That's why people live in these teeny tiny apartments because the, the location is so important of where they want to be. They sacrifice the space. Um, so you can, you have more ability to access more places, I should say, or live in more places with renting. Payments. Uh, we all know how much you make may change. Well, I should say will change. I mean, it may change every year. Hopefully you get a raise. It changes when you change jobs. Um, maybe when you, you know, move and you get a new job. You can't predict, or I should say, it's very difficult to predict stability for decades to come, right? Uh, it would be real easy if I could tell you uh, how to just get things set for the next 30 years. But if you own a home and you sign the paperwork for a 25 year loan or 30 year loan, which sounds like a long time, but houses are really expensive. So you're still paying, you know, $1,500 um, a month. You know, obviously it depends, but that payment is gonna stay the same $1,500 for the next 30 years. So you can plan all your other bills. You know what that housing payment and your insurance and your taxes and all of that is built into that, you know, $2,000 or $1,500 mortgage payment. When you rent, you don't have any control. So you can't pay, uh, uh, well, I should say when you own, you can pay extra and you can pay it off early, save money on interest. But paying off rent early, there's, you don't save any money. There's no real paying it off early. Uh, you don't have any control if rent is raised the following year. In fact, it's always been raised. I There hasn't been a single year that's gone by that I didn't get a letter that says, you know, if you wish to stay here in this apartment complex at this apartment, you know, your rent will go up by this much. You know, these are our offers. You have to let us know by this date. And Sometimes it's not so bad. Sometimes it's like 40 bucks a month. Sometimes it was like, it was like $80 a month. And that's a lot. That's a huge difference. Uh, so you may think, okay, well, I have this good job right now, uh, or I have this great deal on an apartment right now. You can't be sure that you're going to be able to stay in that apartment for 10 years or even five years, you know, or even three years, really, unless you have a three year lease. Um, you know, or even a house. If you're renting a home, three bedroom house, three years is a long time. Whoever actually owns that house probably, you know, wants it back at some point. So again, you don't have as much control over uh, where you get to stay or excuse me, um, 
<laughs> the, the rising cost uh, of live living. Uh, expenses, uh, expenses, this, this slide here is a big reason why I did not uh, own a home until uh, 2021. Uh, I was, yeah, 2021. It was just this past year. Uh, I really, I didn't want one. I didn't want what came with it. I had my apartment, I had what I needed, and I didn't want to have to cut a lawn. I didn't want to have to shovel snow because, you know, that's work. <laughs> you have, you know, taxes, you have to be responsible for all these utilities. And I just wanted to make one rent payment and, and you know, still pay for utilities, but less. Uh, usually your rent includes uh, one utility. It'll include gas, but you have to pay electric or it'll include water and gas or water and electric, but you have to pay gas, you know, something like that. Um, so I've purposely avoided that because I did not want those extra expenses um, and unexpected expenses when you're renting uh, if the oven blows up, if um, there's a storm and a tree, uh, you know, falls on your into your window and breaks it, it needs to be fixed. It's going to be fixed. The apartment complex, the leasing company, they're going to fix it or replace it. That's part of the, the agreement you have with them. When you own your home and a tree falls on your house or, uh, you know, you drive into your garage door, uh, their oven blows up, you're responsible for fixing it. You don't have an oven? Well, you need to go shop for an oven. There are a few hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So maybe we don't go new, let's look used. Let's, you know, that's a whole nother um, thing of, you know, trying to find these appliances that you've never really had to think about shopping before. So be ready for unexpected expenses or uh, account for being unexpected expenses or the fickle finger of fate, as we say. Uh, customization. Uh, this, this is a big reason why people, some people will make that leap from rent to buy. Uh, I'm very crafty. Uh, I love, you know, making paper flowers and uh, sewing and things like that. Uh, when I had an apartment, I uh, painted the doors because they're these brown, there's brown ugly doors. And I was like, well, I want to paint the doors the same color as the wall. And then it, you know, it looks one color instead of having this door. And I did that. And I lived there for seven years. So by the time I left, it was fine. But I knew that I was probably gonna have to paint over that before uh, I left. Uh, I used to live in an apartment in Rochester. We painted this bright blue kitchen because uh, it, it looked awesome. We had this beautiful kitchen, but we had to repaint it white before we moved out because that's how we found it. That's part of the agreement. You know, so it's not that you can never make any changes with an apartment. Sometimes they'll allow it, but either you have to fix it or now you have to pay for them to hire painters. And believe me, that is going to be way more expensive than you going out and just, you know, just, just throw some paint on the walls. Uh, putting holes in the walls, be careful. Uh, you can get charged for that. Uh, damage done to either the furniture or not the, the furniture, but you know, like the, the, the doors or the cupboards, uh, the, the countertop, the sink, you know, any of those things that were already there, you can lose your security deposit. So you, you can't do a whole lot of changing. You can decorate, you know, uh, with furniture and rugs, but you never really have that full, um, I can make this look you know, exactly the way I want it, or, or some people feel they can never make it look that way. Maintenance, uh, this, this is kind of, I guess the maintenance was more of <laughs> the maintenance and expenses was, uh, I, I don't want to have to cut the grass. I don't want to have to shovel the snow. You're responsible for the walkway. There's a sidewalk. I have, you know, a little bit of sidewalk in, in front of the house. Legally, I have to have that clear. If someone wants to walk their dog on the city sidewalk, they can do that. If someone wants to push their stroller down the city sidewalk, 
they need to be able to do that. And I can be fined uh, if I don't have that shoveled, if my grass grows too long, um, you know, if, if let's say I have a broken, a busted up car uh, that's up on blocks in the driveway. And that'll probably sit there for maybe a day. And then, you know, the city is going to come and say, well, you, you can't leave this sitting here. You, you got to do something with it. Uh, the surprise maintenance, the very first thing I had to uh, pay for when I bought the home was the chimney and was the last thing I expected uh, during the inspection. They said, oh, your chimney's in, Meh. you know, you're going to have to look at it, get it replaced in the next few years. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll keep that in mind, but you know, tuck it away. And then uh, the homeowner's insurance said, we read the report. We want someone else to look at the chimney. Someone said, you have to get the chimney fixed. Uh, right away, or the policy is going to expire, and then you're not going to have insurance in your home. And it was this, you know, ridiculous thing that I'd never had to deal with before. So I had to come up with, you know, that's why you need credit to be able to acquire money when you don't have over a thousand dollars, you know, two thousand dollars for someone to build you a chimney. You know, it's, it sounds crazy, but that's that's what I had to do. You know, otherwise my insurance would lapse. Uh, if anything happens, uh, it gets worse and worse and worse. So things like that, keep in mind, if you're renting, you can't paint the walls, but you're not gonna have to replace the roof. Uh, you buy the house, you can make a garden, you can, you know, put a koi pond in the backyard, put in a bonfire if the city allows it, but, you are responsible for that property and the safety of that property and the safety of anyone who comes on that property. So if you have an unsafe house, uh, your floors or your foundation, and you think that doesn't matter, it's just me. Legally, that's not quite how it's seen. Uh, income. Uh, income, uh, like renting, isn't as predictable or, or it's hard to be confident in its stability. Uh, maybe you've worked at your job for two, three years and you see no reason why you aren't gonna be here in another five years or uh, you're, you're gonna stay here. That used to be really the standard uh, in my parents' generations. All of our dads worked somewhere for 35 years, 40 years for some Maytag, Ford, Pepsi, you know, Pan Am, you know, all these big companies and they stayed there forever. And that was their big, you know, honor and accomplishments of, you know, loyalty to this company. And that's a wonderful thing. The mindset today, the millennials, the Gen Z, it's very rapid. It's very short attention span right now. Uh, I want to do this job, but I don't want to be committed to this career. You know, I want to try things out. Uh, there's not the idea as much of loyalty of I, I'm good. I plan to stay at this company because they hired me. It's, uh, you know, I want to be able to do a lot of things, which is fine. It's just a different way of looking at it. So keeping that in mind. What, what kind of personality do you have? I am, I'm the old school, uh, the, if I can help it, if I can find a job that I love, why would I leave? You know, I have no intention on leaving unless, you know, something comes up. Uh, other people, A, uh, maybe in a field where it's very up and down. Uh, you know, if they're an actor, you know, and a stage actor, a commercial actor, um, working in film, uh, certainly it's job to job to job. When you get hired, it's only for a few months at a time, uh, maybe a year. So you can't always predict, you know, your income a year from now or how much you'll be making two years from now. Um, that leans itself more towards renting because you have more control. If you lose your job, your income suddenly 
drops substantially and you can't afford where you're living at. Well, you have to pay the rest of your lease, but you can move to a cheaper place. You can change housing pretty easily to a more affordable location. If you owned a home and your income dropped significantly, you are responsible for exactly the same things. You still have to pay, you know, just as much as before. You know, maybe you can talk about extensions. Uh, you can try to work something out, but you need to be prepared for the unexpected. There's a lot of jobs that people purposely plan on moving around. I have lots of friends that are that way. I, I don't understand it. You know, they moved to Boston for a year. My old roommate moved uh, to Washington, D.C., and then she moved to Boston, and then she's moved to Atlanta, uh, and this is all, she's a teacher, so it's not like she has, you know, you can teach anywhere. She just, she has that spirit of, I want to be in a different place. I want to try something new. That concept terrifies me. <laughs> Um, so I am more of the, the owner, but honestly, for years, I thought I was going to move to New York. Uh, so that was pre COVID. We all had a different life pre COVID everything changed. So I, I was renting because I didn't think I would stay here. So I don't want the commitment of a home. Um, so again, you really have to take into account what you assume your income is going to be or how much of an income you think you can Right, at least I can make this regularly, you know, hopefully more, but at least I know I can make this. Uh, investing. So buying a home in general, the idea of buying a home is that it's an asset, that it's an appreciating asset, that it will gain value over time. Usually because someone lives in a home for 50 years, 30 years, um, you know, even 25 years, uh, the housing market may have changed uh, dramatically. <laughs> and certainly you've seen it go up and down with these foreclosures. It may be worth, it may be worth like a hundred thousand more dollars now than what you paid for it, which is like, really? Like you get the appraiser to come in and the appraiser does the same thing they did when you bought the house. And they say, we think it's worth this much. And you're like, well, maybe I, I wasn't planning on selling the house, but well, maybe now I'll sell the house because I'll make, I'll make, you know, hundred thousand dollars or I'll make, you know, $50,000 or, you know, something from it. Um, or you think, well, I'm going to hold on to it for even longer because I want it to grow, uh, you know, in value even more over time. I don't want to sell. It's too early when you're renting you never gain any of that value. You, you don't gain any footing. Um, when I think back to the many, many years, uh, I mean, 10, 10, 15, 15 years of renting, you know, that I paid rent purposely. Uh, if I'd put 15 years towards a house, oh my gosh, I could have, I could have bought half a house. But you know, it's what works best for you. I don't have anything to show for, uh, you know, 15 years where living in a house for 15 years, you now have something, you know, worth that much that you can sell to someone else. Um, oh, before we move on, I did want to mention, they brought it up in the video, home values can be lowered as well. And it's, obviously not ideal. It's not common. It's more likely their value will increase, but I've absolutely seen it. I've seen it more than once where someone buys a home for, let's say $150,000 and they've been making payments for a few years, two, three, four, five years. And now they get, uh, they, they want to get it refinanced or uh, they, they maybe they're moving, they're thinking about moving. So they get it appraised and it turns out the house is only worth $125,000. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? But we bought it for 150. That's, that's what we're paying. You're saying that if we sell it, we're not even going to be able to break even on, on what we bought it for. 
yeah, maybe it's so maybe now it's worth a hundred thousand um, dollars. When there was that housing bubble, uh, people's home values dropped so dramatically. It was terrible. Uh, the term underwater. If you say your home is uh, underwater, it's that you owe more on the house than it's worth now, which is a terrible situation to, to think about being in um, or, or how to get out of. So as much as purchasing land or a cottage up north or you know uh, a home uh, that you plan on you know selling 30 years from now uh, as an investment, you know think of that. Um, there was another thing for investing I was over homes that oh, I had I had. I had a point, I apologize. Um, so the price, the price value of your home can go up uh, or it can go down. Determining what's right for you. Again, uh, you, someone might be saying you're making the wrong decision renting or you should never be owning a home. I know friends, I, I, I know specifically friends that I was shocked to hear that they bought their home it was it was a, a single single girl friend of mine this was years ago and she owned her home it was a little tiny bungalow in berkeley but she made significantly less money than i did and it was a huge portion of her total you know monthly income and i i just couldn't believe uh that she and it didn't end well we'll leave it at that uh, other people just really want to, they rush into buying a home uh, because they think they're supposed to. Uh, it's what their parents tell them to do. My dad's been telling me to buy a home. Uh, you'll gain equity. You know, you're throwing your money away renting. I understand that, but I also have these many, many other categories, you know, that I've considered as well. There's no right answer. It's determining what's my plans for the future. How much do I think I'm going to make? Um, what, what's my job? Will I have the same job, you know, teaching in a classroom? That's a relatively standard type job that wherever state you're in, you're kind of doing the same thing. If you're um, a hairdresser, uh, if you work down in, you know, Miami uh, or in New York City, uh, you may have a completely different life than out in the Midwest. Um, you know, working in a coal mine, you know, there's just, there's different careers. Do you want to stay with what you're doing? Do you think you might years later want to change? Um, and it's about your spouse. We're also thinking ahead in time. There's going to be a point where there's someone else in your life to consider, you know, um, are they going to change jobs? Are they the actor? Are they the person that wants to, you know, move uh, you know, all around the world, you know. And family and relationships, this is what I was uh, getting into next is you might want to move now, you might want to say to yourself, I'm 21, I'm, or I, you know, I'm 24, I'm still young. Uh, I have no problem renting for the next few years, let's say until I'm 30, and I'm going to try to travel. Uh, I'm going to try to get some different jobs. Uh, I'm going to kind of get that out of my system now. So uh, when I find a good job, I, I intend on just staying here. But for now, I don't mind if I kind of leave and come back. Uh, a lot of people do that. They'll go off, uh, you know, work a few years and then uh, come home to, you know, get married and have a family. Uh, it may have to do with getting married and having a family. It may just have to do with you know, literally your immediate family, um, your grandparents, your siblings, there's all kinds of reasons you don't want to leave uh, the state or you don't want to be within, you know, a three hours drive away, someone's, you know, closer to the end, you know, someone's about to have a new baby, you want to watch someone grow up, uh, you know, someone's losing their memory, uh, there's, there's, it's a lot of reasons why you may say, I'm not ready to leave yet. 
you know, I need to stay in this area or in this, you know, uh, neighborhood because of family and relationships. In a few years, uh, because unfortunately the person passes on or in a few years when, you know, a child is older or I, I want to have my own kids, something like that. But I know for now I need to stay. Or are you moving for someone else's family? You know, are you moving to be closer to your girlfriend or boyfriend's family? Um, are you moving for a job uh, and maybe trying to bring some of your friends with you or taking, taking a friend with you? Um, it says, uh, are, is your domestic situation stable, especially if purchasing with a partner? Now, we've talked about credit, we've talked about building a reputation, signing a lease, signing your name on a lease, the contract that you have with the leasing company. You know, I, Colleen Godfrey, promise to pay you this much uh, for 12 months or the equivalent of that much money, you know? And I'm being held to that. Now, I may have people stay on my couch. I may have uh, a boyfriend or a best friend uh, stay over, live with me. Uh, but my name is the one on the contract. And my name is the one being you know, held accountable. So you could you know, have a boyfriend, girlfriend. Both of your names are on the lease. OK, now you're both held responsible. You may say, oh, we'll never, we'll, we'll just always be together. We'll never be apart. Maybe, maybe you just might be apart. And if they take off and leave you, you know, with the bill or they take off uh, and you cannot get something out of your name, uh, you know, without, you know, their permission, you cannot get, you know, maybe a security deposit back because it goes to both of your names. Um, if people get, you do, you do not want to have your name attached to anything that you are not like completely confident and in control of, right? Uh, I I own my home and my name, uh, and my my fiance lives there. But is that quite as responsible with money? So I'm just gonna keep my name. <laughs> I I'm gonna keep my name. His brother's wife has the house only in her name, even though it's, you know, they're married. Um, sometimes people will put, you know, both spouses' names on a car or just one person. I highly recommend caution. There's really no need <laughs> to combine bank accounts, combine, you know, leases, uh, unless you have to. Why, why are you doing it? Uh, you don't want to add yourself unless you're sure they can pay. You don't want to add someone else to yours unless you're sure they can pay. Um, and especially purchasing. I mean, purchasing a home with a girlfriend or boyfriend uh, or fiance and, you know, who you don't, we don't end up together or even getting a divorce. Now you both own a uh, half of, you know, this giant asset that, Neither, you know, what if both of you want to live there? Both of you want to sell it? Sounds, sounds like a disaster. Uh, finances. Uh, your rent payment and your mortgage payment maybe could be pretty similar. You know, there are very expensive rent payments. Rent payments, uh, especially of a house. I used to babysit for a family who uh, she had two kids and she changed jobs a lot and she would move to different houses every couple of years and they lived in a house. And as far as you knew, they owned it, but really they were, you know, just renting it. Um, well, why didn't she buy it? Well, do you have money for the down payment? When you're buying a car and you see those sign and drive, you know, zero down, you can just walk in and leave with the car. You can't do that with a house. You absolutely cannot. Um, you have to put a certain percentage down, at least 3% down. Uh, and then there's these closing costs and there's other costs. So be prepared for $10,000. Easy. Maybe 20,000, somewhere between 10 and 20,000. 
So even if the arrangement you're making with the loan company is agreeable and you feel confident about being able to make those mortgage payments, where are you going to, do you have $10,000? Where are you going to get $10,000? No, you cannot take out a loan for $10,000 for your loan for you know $100,000. So that down payment sometimes can really stop people from uh, making that jump. And there are some government programs, there are some um, tax relief, uh, MISHTA, there's some education uh, courses where uh, you'll get a break on a down payment or you'll get a reimbursement uh, towards a down payment. So certainly encourage you to look into that. I would not go into buying a home uh, broke, you know, as they say, uh, you might have to replace the chimney. Uh, your refrigerator might die, and then I guess you have no refrigerator. Uh, expect uh, things to either go wrong or need to be replaced, you know, within the first year or so. Whoever was there before you knew they were leaving and didn't get it fixed, right? Those minor things. You're going to have to fix those minor things. Your lifestyle. And again, this is kind of all of it wrapped into one, you know, your lifestyle, your relationship you have with your family, the relationship you have with your job. Um, I know uh, people working in the movie industry uh, and they end up getting these Airbnbs uh, all over the country for months at a time. Uh, sometimes their company will pay for them to live in a hotel for a month. So they are not even considering <laughs> buying a home. Um, oh, I remember what my old, what my thought was that I forgot. Um, what if part of your lifestyle is, yeah, I, I do want a property here. I do want to have a home, you know, near my siblings and my parents and my family. I want to have a home to come back to, but I also travel for my job, or I also want to be able to follow opportunities that, you know, become available. So renting out your home is a possibility. You have the option if you know, hey, I'm going to be overseas for two years or I'm going to live uh, in Atlanta for two years. I can see if someone wants to rent my house, you know, live in my home while I'm gone and pay me to live there. And that'll pay my mortgage, probably more than your mortgage, definitely more than your mortgage. But again, you're going to have to continue to fix things. If things go wrong, you're going to have to trust that those people are going to pay you. Um, but you may be able to own a home and, and still keep it kind of as an investment, as, as an asset, something you use for income. You rent out or maybe rent out to different family members or you uh, live in a uh, but you rent one of the bedrooms out to one of your friends all the time. So half of your mortgage each month, you know, is paid by one of your friends. Uh, you know, you, you can think of these other scenarios um, as, as well. Um, work. Even if you work nearby, we're talking about moving, you know, to different cities, different states. Um, I grew up in Connecticut. And it seemed like everybody worked in New York. They lived in Connecticut and they drove to New York to go to work. Or at least, you know, when I was a kid, everyone's dad did that. Um, here, and it was like an hour drive, you know, or, or they take the train into the city for an hour. You know, that was just normal. Here in Michigan, when we moved here, an hour, you know, commute one way is ridiculous. It's, it's unheard of, you know, it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Come on, a half hour is a lot to ask. So are you willing to commute, you know, uh, renting, you can move around the area, you know, Sterling Heights, Royal Oak, Farmington Hills, Shelby Township, you know, they're not far, but you want to move like just close enough, uh, you know, to make it convenient uh, by your, where you work. You know, if you own a home, you're kind of committed to, I'm going to have to commute to Port Huron you know, if I have to. We used to have uh, a girl I worked with who lived in Flint and she came here every day to Troy for work and from Flint. She worked here for about a year, um, but you know, she owned a home. You got, you got to be willing to take what you can get, you know? 
so again, it's not a perfect decision and it's not a lifetime decision. Do you want to rent or own a home right now? You might change your mind in two years. You might change your mind in 10 years, but you're looking ahead to make a decision for your situation right now. You know, and you need to look at all of these categories, not just uh, the money or not just the family or not just, um, oh, I'm excited I'm, to be in a relationship or I have friends, you know, once you get married, you have to own a home. You can't rent when you're married. Of course you can. What, what are you talking about? So what works for you? Uh, do, were there any questions, anything uh, to add? I could go uh, on and on with uh, personal stories with homes. I'm sure you could as well. Of, uh, you know, you, you find a roll of old dimes in, from 60 years ago in the walls, but then your chimney falls down and it could go either way. <laughs> You guys got any questions? You can either type it in the chat or I can unmute you. All right, no questions. Well, um, definitely what we have learned from today is that you need to plan and prepare. It's, it's not something that you can just whimsically do, you know, overnight. You really need to make preparations because there are a lot more responsibilities involved in owning versus renting. And truthfully, um, it's not something that you should just go into immediately. You really do need to take some time and make some decisions by selecting the different areas you're interested in living in and evaluating the cost and determining whether or not your income can comfortably handle all of these expenses. So um, great presentation, Colleen, as always. You provide us with such valuable information. And even if um, you're not ready to do this now, it's very good information to have so that when you are ready, you can say, oh yeah, I remember this and move in the directions of the various steps that you'll need to take without becoming overwhelmed or you know, missing out on something. So we're going to bring this to a close then, and we will see you on Friday. Yeah. Once you decide to own, own if you decide to own the home, then you got to get the mortgage. So we'll there cover that go. next. <laughs> Going through the steps of a mortgage. Yay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Colleen. We appreciate your time. Everybody, you guys have a great day. Have a great day. Bye. Colleen, do you have um, a presentation on insurance? Yeah. The answer is yes. I've never done it before. I've kind of avoided it just because it's not, I'm not any sort of expertise on it. Um, but I can, I can go back, look through it. Um, I, it would be along these lines, you know, it would be introductory. So yeah, um, I just, I'm, I'm looking for a basic information session on insurance, you know, term life, what's the difference? Because it is kind of confusing. I don't want anything detailed and elaborate. I just want to give them something to consider. All right, let me let me look what it's, uh, I think it's more different types of, yes. I will, <laughs> I've got something. I'll let you know what I got. <laughs> okay, good deal. Thanks, Colleen. All right, thank you. Bye now. <laughs>